A postcard? From Angie? Miss Meredith, I am so, so sorry I haven't been able to see you. It's just that I've been swamped organizing my not-so-timely exit from Providence Oaks. I'm sure you understand. You've probably seen the foreclosure notice. That certainly helped expedite my decision to leave. Anyway, I'll be honest. I'm still thinking about that kiss we shared in the car. And I don't usually dwell on these kind of things. So, feel special, Meredith. I hear you're going to the open mic night on Sunday. I wasn't planning on going, but I want to see you before I leave. I'm really anxious to find out what you've decided to do. Whether you're going to stay in this town, or go back to the city, or do something else entirely. And I'm going to be forward, as you know I always am. I'd like to know if little old me figures into those plans, somehow. So, anyway, I'll see you there, yeah? Love, Angie. Happy Saturday, Saturday everyone. It's time once again for a Pio Positive Report. That key. Today's verdict is from Cheryl. Hi, Jack. I went for a walk the other day and suddenly encountered a majestic stag. We looked at each other for a few seconds and, and then he walked off into the woods. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, you're still here, huh? That makes two of us. When are your parents coming back? Actually, they might just stay in Florida. Florida? Your parents? <laughs> yeah, isn't it weird? They'll be back soon. Florida is expensive and honestly isn't all it's cracked up to be.
They found a lovely and affordable place next to the beach. Sunshine and the beach get boring real fast. Well, I better be on my way. Have a nice day. Here's your mail. Okay, fellow Providence Okians, it's time once again for the sent-in letters and announcements. This one's from our very own Maureen, or Mo, as we all know her. Hey, folks. Just wanted to grab your ears for a second to let you know all about the upcoming open mic night over at Mo's Diner this Sunday. That's right. Claim your 15 minutes of fame, enjoy some well performances, and the usual good food and drinks for everyone. I expect to see all of y'all for a great evening, and maybe even some dancing. You know who you are. Come join the show at Moe's at 8 p.m. this Sunday. I'll come get you if you don't. Well, you heard her, folks, and I'll be there, too, so you better not miss it. Back to the music and to one of my favorite songs. Mail Carrier Meredith. Farmer DJ Jack. Seen any ghost drivers on the way here? Ghost drivers? Yeah, you know, people driving on the wrong side of the road. Nope, haven't seen them. Okay, I was just wondering. Don't bother. I need to get back to the live show. See you tomorrow, I reckon. Bye now. I reckon. Oh, and please close the door. Don't want to broadcast any mail truck noise. Thank you much.
I'm busy. Aren't we all? No! Damn it! I almost had it. I almost fucking had it. Thanks for breaking my concentration. You're welcome. <sighs> Video games are supposed to be fun. I feel horrible. Absolutely horrible. I know the feeling. You know what? I can beat this damn game, and I'm not quitting until I have. Okay. Here's your mail.
No lights for That's the last of them. And so ends a week full of turmoil. Are you happy it's over? Only the Angels hadn't lost to the White Sox. That would have made it perfect. How much would you have won? $876.34. You've been a nice payday, huh? We're playing each other again tonight. Should I change the bet? Sorry, Frank, but I really don't care about sports or gambling. <laughs> Meredith, no problem. I'll stop talking about it. Or I'll try at least. Have a great weekend, Meredith. Oh, wait. This was your last day. I totally forgot to tell you, but they still haven't found someone else for the job. So I guess you can have it if you want. Thanks, Frank, but no. Are you sure? It's a great job. You know what? Think about it, and let me know Monday morning when you return your stuff. I gotta run now. Red Sox are playing the Yankees. Hello? Hi, Meredith. It's your dad again. How was your time in the mail delivery business? Oh, hi, Dad. Well... Don't take this personally, but I'm glad it's almost over. <laughs> no apologies necessary, Meredith. I'm glad you gave it a try. Yep. And at least now I can finally put faces to your mailman war stories. <laughs> I was hoping I could listen to one of those for once. Oh, hold on, Meredith. Let me guess. Mom wants to talk to me? Hi, Meredith. <sighs> Sorry to butt in, but I was wondering, are you planning on going back to the city? Hi, Mom. Well, yeah. Steve gave me an offer that's almost impossible to refuse. Partner in the company. Wow, that's great. Although, I'm a little worried that you might put work first and everything else second. I'm a little worried about it too, but I can always quit and get a mail delivery job. So that's work. Any news about interesting people, perhaps? You know, the interesting, interesting ones? More than interesting, actually. I haven't felt like this for a long time. Oh, that's so nice to hear. But how will that work when you're back to your busy life? 
I wish I knew. Maybe I shouldn't pester you too much about it. Sometimes it's better to regret what you've done than what you haven't done. Nope. Hold on. Is this the part where Dad takes over? Hey, Em. I just wanted to say, don't get on the plane right away when they announce that boarding has started. I mean, why hurry to get in that cramped airplane seat? Thanks, Dad. I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. It's just something that popped in my mind. Uh, have a good flight, Em. Let us know when you've landed. Oh, we're running out of coins again. Gotta go. Take care, Em. Okay. Bye. The Countess and the Carpenter. Chapter 4. No one screws better than the Carpenter's Apprentice. Old Mr. Nabenshoe acted like he was an expert on the topic. What he's done back there is nothing short of astounding. I'd hire him for any job, and I'd pay good money for it. I never expected that the fence he repaired would survive last night's storm. <laughs> anyway, I love this town. You know I do. So, I'm dedicating my last jokes to specific people here tonight. The first one's for Maureen. A guy walks into a bar, and dozens of slabs of meat are hanging from the ceiling. So he asks the bartender, what's up with the hanging meat up there, man? So the bartender says, ah, you're new here. Well, we like to play a game here. If you can jump up and slap a steak, the house will pay for your drinks all night. However, if you miss, you have to pay everyone else's bar tab. So, wanna give it a go? Nah, says the man. <laughs> Those stakes are too high. <laughs> this one's for our own newcomer, Meredith Weiss. So, a woman's driving down the freeway, but all of a sudden, she hears a local news bulletin warning drivers on the very freeway she's on. They're saying, please be advised of this very dangerous situation of a car going the wrong way. So the woman says to herself, one car? <laughs> Why, there's dozens! <laughs> well, folks, wasn't that special? Now, let me know if any of you have any jokes about Jack, you hear? It's an open mic, after all. <laughs> it's actually time for a little break right now. So come on up to the bar for some of our finest concessions. We'll continue shortly. Mildred, how are you? And how are the cats? Fine, on both counts, dear. Thank you for asking. So, do you like the hair? Love it. That hairdresser did a great job. Thank you, dear. Pity it's quite the waste of time and money, seeing as how I can't stay for long. Really? What's the rush? You see, my son decided to drop by, unannounced, and he's staying the whole weekend. Oh, that's wonderful news. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, anyway, take care, dear. Now, where did he park the car? Yes, it's me, Matt Kearney, in a neck brace. Real funny, huh? Oh, hi, Matt. What happened? Well, I was about to send the final boss, the afterlife, but then the computer crashed. I kicked my foot out in anger and fell from my chair, and now I'm here looking like a loser. I'm sure you'll beat the game one day. Don't give up on the dream. I can't play like this, but I'm going to work out a strategy in the meantime. 
Guess who? Jack Burton? Ah, <laughs> now I'm going to be a disappointment. It's just me. Even better. Though I never would have guessed. So, what have I missed? Eh, not much. Jack just did some comedy. But the final act is supposed to be the real showstopper. At least, that's what Maureen tells me. Really? Well then, I guess I arrived just in time. So, how have you been? Busy packing, I guess. Super busy. Again, I'm sorry I didn't have more time to... Hey Angie, hey Meredith. Sorry to pop in like this, but I just wanted to inform you I fixed everything on the RV. She's got a new radio, I replaced some wiring, adjusted windshield wiper speed. The sea turtle is ready to go! <laughs> That's great, Lori. Thanks. I'm sure it's like she's brand new. Well, I wouldn't say that, but you'll see. Gotta go later. An RV, huh? Oh, it's kind of a long story. You know Mickey and June? The hiker couple, right? Well, long story short, I've somehow gained possession of their vehicle of choice, which, as Miss Young just described, is a perfectly adequate RV that I'm gonna use to motor right out of this sad little town. So you're definitely leaving? Absolutely. Come with me. I mean it. Leave this sad old town behind and go wherever we want to go. Free spirits, the way Mickey and June intended. Hmm, I have grown quite fond of you, you know. Likewise, Miss Weiss. But at some point, you've got to give me a definite answer. You get that, right? Look alive, folks. It's time for the final act. It's a doozy. <laughs> Saved by the bell, babe. I got stuff to do anyway. Angie, wait. Dear people, none other than our own Kay Evans will perform next. She has been writing songs since she was a little girl. And I cannot say how thrilled I am to host her first performance of hopefully many to come. I am so proud of you, honey. Please put your hands together for Kay, everyone. This does not happen a lot, but you have left me speechless. That was K, people. Another round of applause. Well, it's a good thing I didn't leave when Reynolds started his nonsense. This kid can sing. Oh, hi, Mr. Mackey. Yeah, she's awesome. Well, it's good to see someone flourish. But I'd rather be home right now. Isn't it fun to step out every once in a while? Smoking a pipe and reading a proper book is the only acceptable way to spend a Sunday evening in September. Bert, thank you so much for coming. I know you'd rather be somewhere else right now. That's okay, kid. I don't regret it one bit. 
You did great. But ladies, if you'll excuse me, I'm out of here. Good night, Bert. Thanks again. And now for an announcement. I'm serious, so hush now. Now, you all know that Kay has been working here at the diner for quite a while now. In fact, she was my anchor after Stan left us. And I think the time has come to formally announce right here that I will put your name above the door of this place, honey, where it belongs. Kay's place. Mokay's. We haven't settled on a name yet, but there you go. Another round of applause. And have some drinks with us. That was amazing. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Em. It felt amazing. I was so super nervous, you know? Like, shaking and all that. I'm so glad it went well. Kay's place, huh? Congratulations! That was quite a surprise. Yeah, I told you. Mo asked me, like, a gazillion times, right? Kind of felt right this time. We haven't hashed out any details, as you might have noticed. <laughs> But it feels good, you know? How did it feel to be up there? Oh, it was so great to be performing again. It felt amazing. I'm all over the place right now. It was such a rush. I will definitely be doing that again. If they let me, of course. That's great. I am so proud of you, Kay. You really have made a great life here. Thanks, Em. I'd like to think so. Big day tomorrow, right? You know what you're going to do? Honestly? Well... Wait, I'm not good at this stuff, so... I just want to say... It was good to have you back these past weeks, and Really good. You just do what you feel you have to do. I'm just glad we reconnected. I promise you'll keep in touch? Whatever the outcome, yeah? Of course! And remember... Time... Marches, marches on! on. <laughs> See ya, Kay. Thanks. For everything. My lovely people, the time has come for the open mic part of the evening to end. Ashley was going to do a ventriloquist bit next, but I just heard he hurt his hand back in his cabin. Let me thank you again for joining us, and there's plenty of food and drink to go around. I sure do hope they're keeping things proper in there while I'm taking a breather. So, you had fun? Oh, it was great. Kay was amazing. You said it. Oh, that girl is so talented. Oh, I'd give my big toe to be able to do what she does behind a keyboard. Oh, sheesh. I'm still thinking about your news about handing over the diner. Kay's place, huh? That was quite the bombshell. That's my style. I've mentioned it to Kay, yes, many times since Stan died. She probably thought I was joking half the time, honestly. I just want to give her the option. It's hers whenever she wants it. And if she doesn't, that's fine too. Yeah, but... How do you make a choice like that, if you don't even know what your own situation will end up looking like? Something on your mind, hon? I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling a bit weird about tomorrow. How did things end up with Kay? You could tell me to mind my own, of course. It's just that that girl is like a daughter to me. We talked, yeah. We really reconnected. And I'm happy we did. <laughs> Listen, you're two grown women. And if that's the choice you two ended up on, I can only respect that. Speaking of choices, you've got a big day in the morning, don't you? Know what you're gonna do yet? Stick around? Move back? I think I have a feeling. Yeah, then you go follow that feeling, hon. Thanks, Maureen. 
I best get back inside. You take care now, Meredith Wise. Take care, Maureen. Good morning, Meredith. You won't believe the weekend I had. Saturday, I placed a bet on the Angels and won. But they played again yesterday, and I let it ride, and then they lost. They're playing again tonight, and now I don't know what to do anymore. Well, Frank, the pattern is obvious. You're a gambling addict beyond salvation. Ha <laughs> ha, Meredith. I guess you're right, and I guess I don't mind. Speaking of gambling, I bet you're taking the job. And that's not just because you're wearing your coat. I love the coat, Frank. But no, I'm taking it off. I'm leaving Providence Oaks again. Ah, oh, that's not what I was hoping to hear, Meredith. But I understand. What are you gonna do? Well, actually, I'm, uh... A van? So you're staying in the delivery business? No, wait. That's an RV. Yep. I'm getting on it, and I'm not sure where I'll stop. So, I guess this is goodbye. I'm gonna miss you, Frank. Thanks for everything. Try to stay out of trouble, okay? Don't worry, Meredith. I'll be fine. Thanks for everything. Take care and drive safe. And the V-Belt is not in great shape, but it should last you another month or three. The sea turtle in all of her glory. Do you like her? Meredith and I named her. She's pretty amazing, Lori. Cute name, too. Thanks for doing this for me. <laughs> You're very welcome. I thought you really wanted to have the RV, Lori. I wanted to work on her really badly. But now that she doesn't need any more work, Angie can at least drive her around. Since I don't have a license, and I'm not old enough to get one anyway. I'll keep you up to date on all our adventures, promise. It'll be like you're right there with us. I'm counting on it. Have fun on the road, Miss W. Thank you, Lori. Will you be back? Probably. I made some friends here. I'll want to see them again. Okay. Well, if you ever find yourself here again, come and say hi. Sure thing. I'd like that. See you around, Lori. Magnificent, isn't she? Yeah, she certainly knows a lot about cars for a kid her age. <laughs> I meant the RV. But sure, Lori's great too. So, you all packed? Sure am. The big stuff's in storage. But I've got the bare necessities. Clothes, toiletries, and a whole bunch of videotapes. So, where are we going first? <laughs> yeah. About that. Hmm? I've grown quite fond of you, Angie. Hadn't you noticed? And here I was, wondering if it was just my imagination. The feeling's mutual, babe. I'm in the driver's seat, by the way. I've heard about your driving. What? What have you heard? From who? People talk. When advertising exec David Howard, parentheses Albert Brooks, is passed over for a promotion and subsequently fired, he decides to change his whole life. He convinces his wife Linda, parentheses Monica Johnson, to sell their house and roam the country easy rider style in a Winnebago. Okay, forget this one. That's just not going to be relatable at all. <laughs> nope. We've got nothing in common with those guys. I have another flick where a bunch of academics set up a ghost hunting business in an old fire station. That should be way more accessible. Angie Eastman, have you seen every single tape in here? Not all of them, but most. Come on! But I don't mind watching them again. In fact, I'd love to see them with someone who... Knows nothing about movies? I was going to put it a little nicer than that. Someone who has unspoilt virgin eyes. Virgin eyes? What are you, a poet now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Lost in America will unspool before these virgin eyes soon enough. Tell me about Stand By Me. It's about four kids from Oregon, right?
Sorry for butting in, folks, but I've got a special treat for y'all. I just updated my playlist. This new song is from our very own Kay Evans. <laughs> 